Today we will talk okay. about Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So in our work every day, we create content on Microsoft 365, Microsoft Cloud. We uh, create files, we uh, create meetings, we chat, we collaborate, discuss, we meet. And it's not just us, it's a lot of people around us too, right? So with that, we create that place where there's a lot of invaluable content and insights available to us. And the cool thing is, is that all of the data and insights is available to us. If we want to extend Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Cloud beyond uh, what, what is available out of the box, we can. We can build uh, custom apps, web apps, demons, device apps, or we can also extend Microsoft 365 within its extension points. We can build Teams tabs, we can build bots, we can build web parts, we can extend search. And we can, in these extension points, these different apps, we can bring together data and insights that are stored in Microsoft 365 and combine them with insights from our line of business apps, right? And we do all of that through the Microsoft Graph. Microsoft Graph API is that extension point, that API that gives us access to everything that is stored in Microsoft 365. And it's info about users, about chats, files, devices, emails, and many, many more endpoints that are available to us because we work on Microsoft Cloud. But there are two things that we need to do first before in these apps that we build, we get access to all these data and insights. First, we need to get a token. Like, who of us haven't really struggled with auth, right? Like, it isn't, at, at first, it intimidates you because you don't know where to start. And you always see like, yeah, so like in this step, put a token and you're good. But how do you do that? How do you do it? And how you handle auth in a safe way, in a way that also is required for the type of app you build. Then when you have a token, there is also the next step. Because you have a token, you reach out to graph, you get the data back, but then you also need to show the data in your app. And oftentimes it's also hard, right? Because it requires you to know CSS. And it's something that you might be skilled in or not. So oftentimes we heard developers talk about these two things, these two hurdle points they need to get through when they want to build apps on Microsoft 365 and actually enrich what is available already in there out of the, the box. And luckily, there is a cool thing available to you today already that solves these two points or challenges and does many, many more things. The thing is, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. What it is, it's a collection of auth providers. And with that, I mean, you can use it in virtually any type of web technology based app you want. You can build, you can use Microsoft Graph Toolkit for short MGT in a single page app, a web app, a team step and SharePoint framework web part. Basically anything that is based on web tech, you can use MGT in there and providers that are available in there for auth will allow you to seamlessly use the context of auth that you already have available in platform of your choice, whether that's Teams, SPFX, or a web app, and put that into, uh, to basically allow you to easily connect to graph so that you will not need to fiddle with auth by yourself. So there's like one major headache solved already. What's more, in MGT, you will also find things that will allow you to really easily retrieve and show the data from Microsoft Graph in your app. Th things like uh, agenda, showing really easily a list of events with just a single line of code. I mean, I do not exaggerate, right? It's like you will be able to see this in practice. With a single line of code, you will show a list of events uh, coming from Graph. And there are some other things like allowing you to show a list of files or uh, pick a channel from, from Teams. So all of that is already available in Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And the cool thing is, is that it evolves. So every month, roughly, there is a release, and each release contains new components, new features that allow you to do more using the same simple approach. And what's more, third point, there's a lot of added value available in MGT2, right? Because the data that it retrieves 
it, it's, it's being cached, which means the apps you build work fast and work the way that users will like the, the experience because you will not issue any additional requests that you actually do not need. So with that, I think it's the time to have a look at Microsoft Graph Toolkit in practice. And when I talk about MGT, Microsoft Graph Toolkit, I always like to start with MGT Dev. It's a great experience on the web that doesn't require you to install anything and that allows you to experience Microsoft Graph Toolkit in practice. So in here, we have an example of MGT Agenda, which is one of the building blocks that we have available in MGT that allows you to show a list of events coming from the calendar of the current person uh, coming from Graph and show that in our app. Notice that this is our app. In this case, our app consists of this single line of code. We have nowhere here auth or anything else. It's just this. Like There is no JavaScript that we need extra for it. There is no CSS. With this single line of code, we retrieve the data from Microsoft Graph, show it in our app, parse the response, and we have everything in place. You don't need to do anything else. It's that simple. Another thing is, for example, imagine that you want to let users pick a file because that is one thing that we see a lot too, is that many apps circle around files, right? So that is a common uh, thing that we see developers build in their apps. Well, again, with MGT file list, you can show the list of files either from the whole drive or a specific folder of specific type and so forth and so on. It's as simple as that. There is also an article cool thing that we see uh, applies to many apps is people. Because no matter what type of app you build, you need some info about a person, whether that's your team, your colleague, sign a ticket, you want to see something else about someone. It's all about other users in your org, right? So in here, you have a simple way to show a list of people, right? And, and this is just a default, but there's also a way to apply a query that allows you to show a specific group of folks. Now, another cool thing is that we see a lot is the ability to show more info about a person. And like by itself, this is cool. But let me show you a thing that we see being used a lot, which is person with a person card. Right. So in here, you have additional info about you see the person's picture, name, job title, department, email, telephone number, but also their org, org chart. Uh, some info about them, and all of that comes actually with this single line of code. The additional thing that we see here is meant to extend the person card with additional info about stuffed animal friends, apparently. right? So it also shows you the ability that you are not only bound to the things that are available out of the box, but you can also adjust it to your own needs. And initially, I showed you the, for example, MGT agenda showing a list of events, but it doesn't need to look like this. Now, imagine that you want to show it like a timeline, three to one, with some additional work. So imagine that in your team, you have a person who is skilled with HTML and CSS. They can easily build the code, the markup you actually need to have MGT download for you the list of events and display it in this view which is very rich and yet simple because the cool thing is nowhere in here you see us doing auth, getting a token, issuing a request to graph, parsing response, handling errors. You don't need to worry about any of that. Microsoft Graph Toolkit does all of that for you, right? The only thing you need to do is to instruct it how you want to authenticate. In other words, what type of app you build and then instruct it what data you want to show in your app, whether that's events, whether that's files, people, or something else. And the cool thing is, is that you can also have it like um, combine MGT with your own CSS. So for example, here, I combined MGT with the H2O framework, and I show info about files as cards, right? So in here, I've built my own template, I've, I've showed info about file and I have some extra CSS for that to show it the way I want to. So it's really flexible in, in the sense and it really allows you to do anything you need. Well, the cool thing about uh, MGT is, is that it, it's really simple. This is the minimal app and it's just as simple as that. It is four lines of code. One, I load MGT in my app. 
Here, I say, hey, I'm building a single page app and I created an app in Azure AD, right? So, so that my app knows how to access Microsoft Graph. In there, I use MSALT, meaning I build a single page app. Now, if I wanted to build SPFX web part or team step, I would authenticate differently. But in a single page app, I, I use MSAL2. I use a login so that users will have IUI. And with that, I want to show agenda, right? I want to show the list of events. So with that, let's have a look how that will work in practice. So I will do npm start to run this single file app in browser. And it's all live, right? So here I am already authenticated as Megan and I can see that I have access already to my events coming from my calendar. Again, going back, this is the whole app. Notice that there is no auth code, handling auth responses, caching tokens, uh, issuing requests to graph, none of that. Why? Because I use Microsoft Graph Toolkit and it does all of these things for me. So that is a quick overview. Let me give you some additional resources that you can use to explore it more, right? So the next step, I'd recommend you to take the Learn Microsoft Graph Toolkit learning path. It gives you a structured way to learn about Microsoft Graph Toolkit, the way it works, prerequisites, even to the point that we say, you know what? The only prerequisite you have is to know HTML, JavaScript, CSS basics. Beyond that, we're going to explain everything you need to know about Azure AD, AAD apps, registration, providers, taking you step by step in a thorough structured way to help you learn. Another thing that you have seen is MGT Dev, which is the web experience that you can use to really easily try out what is in MGT, different options, providers, and so forth and so on, right? So, you, so there's a great way to try MGT in browser for yourself. And then the last step is, Check out the MGT docs because they explain what is available in MGT, uh, how you can use it. They show show samples of code too, right? So it's a great place for you to, uh, to go to when you use MGT in practice and you want to know more about different options. So with that, I'll give it back to Vesa. Excellent. Thank you, Waldek. It's awesome to see how far we've gone and to simplify things. And, and the craft tool is just absolutely spot on. And now, thank you, Waldek, on that one.